Yo, welcome back. Now, member of parliament for Efutu, Alexander Afenyo Marken, is accusing government of handpicking West Blue Consulting to operate a national single window at Ghana Sports without following due process. The MP said government had acted in bad faith by not allowing other firms to compete with West Blue Consulting for the contract. He spoke on the Super Money Show on Joy FM. Our president has handpicked West Blue to do this project. So the question is, did the Leonard Attorney General advise Mr. President on this decision? Or did the legal advisor of Mr. President advise him on this decision? Because we are talking about the recommendation of a committee. And bear in mind that earlier in the year, around April, there was a letter on this implementation, which should, in other words, the, the, the implementation of the single window should have taken off around April. And it same was deferred because there was a need for a committee to look at all aspects. So same was deferred and they did their work. Now, is it the case that at all time we had West Blue in the picture? That is one big question mark. How was West Blue handpicked? When did West Blue come into the picture? I do not want to look at West Blue with any prejudice. I've done some background check. West Blue was, engaged, was registered somewhere in 2012. I've monitored their website for the past two weeks. Things keep changing. That, I'm not so concerned about it. It could be a one-year-old company, but it would have the competence, the expertise. Why not give them the opportunity to compete with others? Why do you give that preferential treatment? Um, obviously, anybody in the industry will tell you that, look, it's marks of uh, favoritism. And if you look at Article 2 says, obviously, it's so clear on what authorities are supposed to do and what authorities who have certain executive powers are not supposed to do. Um, you are not supposed to treat your decisions with prejudice. You are not supposed to be biased. You are supposed to be candid in your dealings so that all players in the field or all individuals and entities you deal with would believe strongly that you've acted in good faith. But as a, as a president... The National Accreditation Board is cautioning the public to be extra vigilant before enrolling for degrees or other programs run by universities. Executive Secretary of the Board, Kwame Date, insisted, charter, insisted that charters are not presented to universities based on when they were set up. He also spoke on the Super Morning Show. I said nine public uh, chartered institutions, mm. those that are autonomous and are able to award their own certificates. They are nine public, but there are three private ones. The rest are uh, under mentorship. I fear COVID nursing. I know they have applied. Uh, I'm not sure whether they have completed the accreditation process, but they are in the process. Catholic University, yes, uh, they had problems with some unaccredited programs. Uh, I think they have since regularized them. Uh, on their website, you will find both the accredited institutions and the uh, unaccredited institutions as they come to our notice. Let me repeat the website, www.nab.gov.gh, www.nab.gov.gh. Now the programs are stated on the uh, certificates. One wanted to know whether when we issue the certificate, the programs are stated. So if the programs are not there, don't enroll in them. Uh, strengthening up, yes, the law uh, proposals for the revision of the law has been uh, have been submitted to the ministry, and they are working on it for uh, for parliamentary action. Uh, the London Centre of Marketing, yes, uh, we published in the newspapers when they started having problems, but those who already have the certificate uh, until a certain date when they started experiencing problems, their certificates are still valid. But we stated that after that date, the certificates will no longer uh, be valid because uh, it appears they have either gone uh, into liquidation or we don't know what's happening to them. Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, I, don't, I will not uh, uh, restrict it to Ashasi. Charter is not given based on the number of years you exist. I have said that there are clear conditions to be met before you can be granted uh, but the people making the argument for charter are always mentioning the number of years. If you decide to mark time for 100 years, then you keep on marking time. But there are specific things to be met. And Ashasi is aware 
other institutions are also aware. Yeah. Well, they well, let's do some security issues now. And following the shooting incident in Bimbela, which claimed four lives yesterday, a member of the NDC's legal team, Abraham Amalba, is calling on the National House of Chiefs to settle the chieftaincy disputes, which is believed to be the root cause of yesterday's shooting incident. Yaiva says the shooting incident should be treated purely as a criminal matter. He also warned against the politicization of the matter by the main political parties. He made this call when he spoke this morning on the AM show. It's not as if the genes of the Nordner is <laughs> predisposed to violence, but I think that, yes, if you hear most of the serious, hideous chieftaincy disputes, it, come it comes from the North. Absolutely. But the issue is that we have pockets of, you know, and when you ask them, um, one map, that's the uh, Bombardier Co., they will tell you that they have spotted areas in this country, about 100 or so, where you have chieftaincy disputes. But I think that what we have to do now is to separate the criminal aspect from the chieftaincy aspect. And that's where I would agree with him that politicians don't need to meddle so in much. the chieftaincy aspect. But as for the criminal aspect, I'm happy this DICEC is meeting. I'm happy they've sent more troops in there. Let's apprehend those who want to foment trouble. Let's apprehend those who don't want the peace to prevail and deal with them criminally. Let's prosecute them and leave the chieftaincy aspect to the regional house of Jesus and national. Well, National Nasara coordinator of the New Patriotic Party, Kamal Dean Abdallah, has also been commenting on the incidents at Pimbila. As we sit now, his own constituency, Bolga Central, we are having two people holding themselves as chiefs. Hmm. By two it's, people. It's not only there. No, it's not only there. I just central, want to tell him. In a central region, Boko, we just saw on the front Boko, page of the Daily Graph. When you go to Boko, a, a very <laughs> protracted chieftaincy dispute still there. Hmm. In Boko? Not only there. Leave Boko. Several areas. Come, several areas. You see, my, the point I here I'm making is that most of us, I'm happy he has agreed with me that we should not meddle in, in it as politicians. And this is what, I mean, that, that's their stock in trade anyway, NDC. When the Yana issue came, they zoom in. We are this, and we are that, and we are for the people. When we come, we'll do this. What happened when they came? Zero. You played and enjoyed political capital out of it. But no, but today, no, look at where we are. But today, this Bimbler issue, if, is it, it's just that the issue is too hot for us now. And given the fact that I come from that place, that part side of the country, that part of the country, he also comes from there, it is better we may allow cool heads to prevail, not to go into so much. But I tell you emphatically that the government of the day have a lot to do in this particular you know, issue in Bimbler. To, they have a lot to do to ensure that, to ensure that there's peace. Security analyst Emmanuel Soati is calling for the resignation of Interior Minister Mark Owen Woyongo. Now, his call follows Mr. Woyongo's comments over the violent clash recorded during Tuesday's by election in Talensi. The clash between the Azoka boys of the ruling NDC and the Bulga Bulldogs of the opposition NPP have been condemned by many. Mr. Woyongo, in an interview, said violence begets violence, an indication that the attack was in retaliation to an earlier provocation. Mr. Suwati, however, believes the comments by the Interior Minister were unfortunate, hence the need for him to retract them or resign. I hope that he comes to do a damage control. Even so, um, maybe he has to do it at the right time. And for me, of course, that if he does not have the trust and confidence of um, the key actors in elections, like NPP other political parties, for the good of the system, he may want to uh, leave voluntarily so that the system is trapped. Because, you see, he's a minister of interior. Minister of interior is a high-ranking official. He's in charge um, of public safety and security. Now, if he comes to make such a statement, what it portends for trust and confidence across board, board here, meaning political actors, you know, I'm not talking about other constituencies, political actors. I think it doesn't um, occur well for trust and confidence um, that is needed for any election, for that is needed for engagement before, during, and after elections. Because the security agencies are core. And being the minister, mm. people might say that even if the police are being professional, they might say that the police are being pushed, or well, the police well, is being pushed by the minister. When now, you ask, <laughs> when you ask that he leaves voluntarily, how do you mean? I mean that he revised. Indeed. I think it's, it's plain and simple, yeah, from my perspective, yes, he leaves. Yes, sure, he leaves, yes, yes. I repeat that hundred times, that he leaves. Very well. That is why I'm trying to link why my reason and the justification for that 
conclusion. He might come and do damage control, but it is up to the other actors to accept it or not. But if he insists on his statement, then he has to leave because, you know, he breached that trust and confidence that is needed. Well, the minister has since retracted his comments, explaining he was not in support of one side over the other on the issue. You can take a break here now and uh, join Francisca Kaka Force in for business right after this.